Welcome back to the Uranium Fever channel. In today's Fallout 76 tutorial, we are building custom crafting stations, showcasing different designs for each category. We will be featuring crafting stations for both the interior and exterior of your camp, including this one merged with Beckett's Bar. Let's get started. Taking inspiration from the game world, the stations we featured today were designed to look like they belong in the wasteland. A big part of this was trying to emulate the cluttered look and feel you often see at existing locations. First up is a series of workstations designed for the interior of your camp, starting with the weapon workbench desk. To begin, let's place down a pressure plate and highlight it to compress it, ready for use. Bring the camp module close by too before placing down a power conduit. We will use these two desks for the first two designs. Place a weapons workbench before moving it onto the power conduit. This will allow you to place the bench on top of the desk we selected earlier. Try and line it up so the crafting bench will be sitting nicely on top of the desk's flat surface once we've drop merged the two together. When you are happy, take them over to the pressure plate and drop merge until they are lined up. It's lined up nicely so let's move it into position. All that's left is adding a little decoration and a chair. Use a flamethrower to temporarily brick the desk. Repair it when you're happy and place another conduit here to make it look like it's in the vise. Complete the look with a small lamp and toolbox. On to the next design, the armour workbench desk. Using a different desk this time, place down two wooden benches, one atop the other, and merge them together. Move the planks on top of an armour workbench and bring it over to the pressure plate before merging the composition. Once the planks appear to be sitting on top of the workstation, bring them over to sit on a power conduit before moving them onto the desk. Position it carefully so the barrel at the side isn't touching the bench. Once it's lined up, bring it over to the pressure plate. Now that it's merged, bring the bench over and destroy it with a flamer before placing a wooden crate in the space below the desk. This is finished, so it's time for number three, a cooking stove merged with a brewing station. We use the red enamel stove to match the red colouring of the antique gas pump brewing station. Place both down before selecting the stove. It can be a little bit fiddly, but you should be able to free place the stove on top. Once you've managed to place it down, bring them over to the pressure plate and drop merge. Gauge how close to the ground the stove's legs are. That's done! Finally for the interior, we have a chemistry station merged with another brewing station and a fermenter. This design is perfect for sitting snugly in the corner of your crafting setup. We included some extra stash boxes on the side with a raised bathtub to add some clutter. Start by placing down a fermenter, a brewing station and a chemistry bench. Move the brewing station onto a conduit before bringing it over to the chemistry bench. Position it in the middle like you can see here. Drop merge the two using a pressure plate until they are lined up. Next, place down a table before bringing the merge stations to sit just on the edge. Place the fermenter on the table. You will need to use a flamethrower to get it closer. Destroy the benches and edge the fermenter into place. Bring it over to the pressure plate and drop merge the composition. As you can see, the fermenter's bucket is merged too far into the table. To fix this, just select the benches to spring them back up, and do the same with the fermenter. Bringing it closer to the edge should do the trick. Repeat the process and let's check to see how close it is this time. That's looking good this time, with it appearing to be leaning on the edge of the table. To place this in the corner, we're going to change the walls behind to glass before destroying them with a flamethrower. This allows us to move everything behind the wall. Repair it and destroy the wall behind the brewing station to move the previous workbench design closer so they overlap. Place down a large cabinet, a bathtub and a radiation barrel to sit on top of the tub. Drop merge and place some chem stash boxes within like they've been stacked up. Similar to previous tutorials, we will also be preparing some stacked planks by merging small and large benches together. Finally, place another large table and go back to the pressure plate to do the rest. It's time to move this in. Switching to a thin wall type like the barn or glass will help here. Destroy the previous benches to give you some room to place the bathtub on top of the surface. That's us done with the interior designs. Time to go outside and work on some cooking stations. The first step is to place down a barren elm tree on the ground. This clears the surrounding area and burning it will stop the tree getting in the way. Next, place a minecart cooking stove and a standard cooking station. 
Position the latter on top of a conduit before moving both on top of the minecart. Using a small rock, place everything on top of this and drop merge until only the cinder blocks are visible when moved onto the ground. For the next one, we'll be using the minecart again, but with a campfire this time. Drop merge a cooking station into the campfire and place it on top of the minecart. Drop merge and place the composition on top of a pickled brain jar. It's looking good with only the cinder blocks and pots visible when moved into position. These are done, so time to add some decoration. Cluttered workbenches are up next. Perfect for placing outside your camp, these modular workbenches will require some flat ground. Begin by placing down another tree to clear the ground. Burn it once you are done. Place three large tables, a tinker's workbench, and a vault tech armor workbench. Move the armor workbench on top of a conduit and then onto a large cabinet. Go to the pressure plate to merge with a table. It's done, so it's time to put it in position. Burn it and move on to the second modular workbench. This time we're going to be merging the tinker's bench into another large cabinet. Make sure it's lined up correctly before drop merging into a second table. Move the tinker's bench into position next to the first and burn it again. For part 3 we will need a heavy weapon stand on a rug as well as a mothman goat totem. Have both ready. Repeat the process we showed previously to create some stacked planks before drop merging these into the desk. Bring them over to a large cabinet and sink them into another large table using the pressure plate. Ok, now pick up the cabinet and set it down with the others. Destroy all three of them. Place a construction light on a small mat and drop merge to submerge most of the light. Take the rug over to the workbenches and set it down so the top of the light will poke through the table. Next, let's give the totem the same treatment so only the top is showing. Place the totem on a conduit and bring them over to the pressure plate. I think the conduit worked well with the totem, so keeping both visible works. Decorate with some wooden planks and set down a stall. Test to see which way you're facing when used. Repair rule and add some clutter. We're going to be finishing up by creating some wall-mounted weapon racks inside the cabinet. Place the wall-mounted cabinet first before destroying it with a flamethrower. With it destroyed, we can place weapon racks behind. Place the first one and then snap the second one to it. Equip some weapons and repair the cabinet. This one is done. Time for our last design, where we'll be merging Beckett's bar with a weapons workbench. This idea comes from the idle animations Beckett has when interacting with his bar. The cleaning animations can easily look like he's cleaning the workbench instead. Place down a spikeboard trap and move the bar on top of it. Beckett is actually going to be a problem throughout this build, so you're going to need to routinely down him or remove him to stop him interacting with his bar. <laughs> the flamethrower works well. With him temporarily out of the way, bring the trap to a pressure plate and drop merge it slightly before bringing it to where we want it to sit. Activate the trap to hide the bar. Ok, now for the best method to keep Beckett or actually any ally in check. Place another spikeboard trap on a conduit. We can place this contraption through Beckett now, perfectly positioning him on the trap. Activate the trap to launch this pest out of the way. Back to the build, place a weapons workbench and a large conduit. Stack some stash boxes on the large conduit before bringing the conduit over to the workbench. Drop merge until the boxes fill the gap. Now move the bench into place where the bar was. Once it's lined up, repair the spikeboard trap. It's lined up nicely, but we need to add more. So launch Beckett again and activate the trap again to hide the bar. We're going to add two weapon racks and a dartboard. After adding the racks, try to place the dartboard like it's resting up against them. Add a metal shelf before filling out the space with some decoration. This is what we used. Stack some green footlockers before attaching a wooden weapon rack. Identify which box it's attached to before bringing it to your camp module to raise it up. Place it at the edge of the workbench facing inwards. Equip some weapons and to finish up we're going to hang some cage bulb lights. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and like the designs we showcased. We have many more camp build tutorials on the way, including a second wagon tutorial, which will also be including another merge with Beckett's Bar. Subscribing and turning on the bell icon is the best way to stay up to date and ensure you don't miss a video. If you enjoyed this particular video, why not drop a like on it as well?
With that said, I am off. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one.